Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on this Distress Oxide series. Now we are looking alphabetically at each of the Distress Oxides in turn, uh, going through what the colour looks like on its own and then two different colour combinations that you can use. One with an additional two colours and one with an additional three colours, so three and four colour blends. Uh, along the way I will be dropping in occasional different techniques as well that you can do with your oxide so if you haven't already I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel and of course make sure that you get the notifications then for this particular series and playlist. So today we are looking at cracked pistachio so we're into the C's we've done all the A's all the B's. Now cracked pistachio is a beautiful green it's stunning you can see there it's kind of a mint it's, I suppose a mint green is the best way to describe this one let's take a look first of all at what this looks like on its own it's so so pretty and you can mix this with pinks with lilacs you can really go with virtually any color with this so let's load up my brush and work this in now it is a paler color and as you've probably seen with some of the previous videos if you've seen any, any of those the paler colours always need a little more work to build up the colour, which of course sounds about right, doesn't it? It sounds normal. So cracked pistachio, I would say, is one of those, but you can soon get that built up like so. Look at that beautiful green. So, so gorgeous. Isn't it lovely? Now I'm going to be mixing that today, first of all, with a completely green um, color combination so we're going to if you want a background for example that's just all your greens then this is going to be perfect so lucky clover is going to be our second color in this particular combination so it's a mid green and we will get to lucky clover of course all of the other oxides in this range we will come to eventually and you can see how lovely that works from the cracked pistachio into lucky clover how pretty is that if i just cover that over a really nice color blend between the two and then let's bring in our third color it's going to be pine needles now this is really deep green again i feel it's still got a hint of blue to it so it's still kind of getting towards the teal the really dark teal kind of color look at this it's quite a new ink pad as well so it goes on it's really juicy at the moment and I'm just because it is a dark color I'm just going to go up to the edge of the uh, lucky clover there Oops. and then what I'm going to do is just give my mat a wipe then I'm going to go back into lucky clover and just go back over this blend line perfect they just work so well, don't they? Obviously, that's a little bit darker there where I've just added some more because it's still damp, but look at that. How pretty is that for a blend? So we've got pine needles, lucky clover into cracked pistachio. Beautiful. Okay, so then let's go nice and bright, shall we? Let's keep our cracked pistachio out. In fact, let's make this the first colour we do. So pick up some of this and lay this down. Again, build it up, just going over in small circles. If you do swiping side to side, you're likely to miss some of the grain on the cardstock or the paper. It's not going to get the ink applied sort of evenly across the surface of the paper. And then you're going to end up with small white patches. And the trouble is, if you then start trying to work at um, getting those covered you're going to end up with darker patches in places and it's just so much harder so if you just work around in small circles always you're going to be capturing every edge of the grain of that paper then we're going into salvaged patina so this is almost a blue but it's still got a hint of green this is kind of like your your blue mint and this is your green mint is how I see them so again, a pale colour, we're going to need to build this one up, but we can do that. And with each colour blend, when I am blending like this and I'm going into other colours, say something like a background, I always go over where I want to be. So for this one, I know I'm going to have my other two colours here. Around halfway, it's going to get 
the blend between the second and third color uh, but I'm going to bring this beyond that so that it's nice and easy to blend into the next color but look at that how stunning so if you wanted to you could go there's another four color option for you you could go from the salvage patina into cracked pistachio and then into your greens that we did lucky clover and pine needles wouldn't that be lovely but we're not we're going to go brighter than that we are now going to go into squeeze lemonade such a happy yellow such a bright almost a, a neon yellow make sure this is really dry you if you try blending with a wet mat you're really going to notice the dampness that gets into your paper and really your paper might start just peeling and getting little bubbles on it and we don't want that so look at this now you're going to get between your salvage pat patina and your squeezed lemonade just here you're likely to get a hint of green again that's okay we don't mind that there we go coming into the two and then lastly festive berries a red that's um, verging on the pink side so keeping things nice and bright look at that again a deep deep color so against the yellow I'm not going to go into it I'm going to blend with the yellow instead of blending with the red so if you've got a pale color and a deep color this also is the same if you've got a, uh, a juicy ink pad and a drier ink pad the juicy one or the dark color you want to be the one that you just lay down and leave there and blend with either the paler color or the drier color because otherwise because you've got so much ink and such a saturation of ink you're going to end up uh, just dragging that into your lighter color or your drier color and it's just going to overtake it so you can see here what I've done is I've actually got a little bit of yellow on my brush and that's absolutely fine so just just work that away on a piece of kitchen towel or a wet wipe there we go so it's almost gone there and I'm happy with that you might get a bit of staining on your bristles anyway depending on which brushes you use of course if you use white ones like mine then you'll get a little bit of staining that's fine it doesn't affect the way the inks blend um, and all these blending brushes blending mats all the inks I'm using are all available at craft stash and they're all linked below for you there we go so I've just blended that into the red now that is a lovely fun primary color blend um, nice and bright perfect for summer starting with cracked pistachio going into salvage patina into squeeze lemonade and then into festive berries so they are two really quite different color blends for you um, for you to try out one quite dark and one of course much brighter and much lighter you'll see we've still got wet patches on these particularly this area is wet on here this area is wet on here the lights are really showing that off but um, you'll be able to uh, let these dry before you then use them on your projects so I'd love it if you could give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed what you saw or if you learned anything today. If you want to catch up with every other video that we've done so far in the Distress Oxide range, please do hit the subscribe button and go and check out the playlist. We've already got a number of videos there and we're working our way through the alphabet through every single Distress Oxide colour eventually. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. Take care. See you again soon. Bye-bye.